Hi, today on Rodney Cameron's Assist, we're going to talk about anxiety. No problem, that's what I do, that's what I do, son. I feel like anxiety is a very important topic to talk about because a lot of people suffer from it, and it seems like the numbers are only going up. I myself suffer from anxiety, so today I want to talk a little bit about what my experience has been and some of the things I've done to help alleviate some of the symptoms of anxiety. You can't really cure it from what I understand. Over time, you know, you get used to it, but it's going to always be there with you. So here's my story. I'm a 16 year army veteran. My last 11 years in leadership as an officer. During that time period, the stress levels just elevated. It came to a peak. There were several things in my life at that time that were causing me to have stress always. So I did carry a high level of stress anyway. I was going through a divorce. I had another child on the way. I was uh, having to move. I took command of a unit that was getting ready to move. I ruptured my Achilles tendon. So my career at that point I thought was in jeopardy because I couldn't physically run and do the things I needed to do with my organization. So. They did remove me from that command, and I ended, ended up getting command later on again, but that was a stressful time period for me because I didn't know what was gonna happen. I bought a house on my own, and I came into a situation where as soon as I bought the house, I had to move. So I went to a place called El Paso Home Buyers. If you ever heard of them, you probably got scammed by them. So the guy told me he would come in, and he's gonna pay my mortgage for me, and he's gonna get somebody in the house that's gonna buy it, but it's gonna take him a couple of years to be able to buy it because he's gonna help them build their credit up. So the plan was he would pay my mortgage, he would get a renter in the house, the renter would pay him, and I would not have to worry about it. I'd just go on about my business. Unfortunately, that's not how it really happened. What really happened was I signed, as soon as I signed a document and I moved out, he had somebody move into that house. I guess they were paying him, but he was not paying my mortgage. And it was showing up over and over late, three months late, four months late, I would call. Sometimes they would answer, and sometimes they would pay it up maybe one or two months, but never get it on time. And then sometimes they wouldn't pay it at all. Sometimes they stopped answering my calls. So I had a lot of different stressors going on in that time period. And uh, it came to a situation while I was in command the second time, and I had a pretty successful command. Everything that we tried to do happened. Uh, no major issues. There were a few small hiccups, but it was nothing major that should have ended the career. Uh, towards the end of my command, I got into a situation where somebody who I was in charge of did something that was inappropriate. It caused an issue that possibly could have been career ending. It was, it was definitely career ending from, for him, but because I was in that chain of command, it could have been career ending for me and for my higher, higher up. So I went and I reported this incident to Post. Post reported it to the my colonel, my boss, which means I jumped the chain of command. I shouldn't have done that, but didn't want to be held responsible. So that was my fault. I take the blame of that. But because I did it that way, it ended up looking bad on me. And then my OER reflected that. So I had that stress. And that was a key stress that kind of pushed me over the edge. Once I realized that I was not going to, that I, I could possibly not retire from the military. So the first time I actually had a panic attack, I was in a unit that trains different people from all over the U.S. in different reserve branches. They bring them together in Indiana where we would train them and they would go and they would basically build, of all the people build 14 different teams. They would send them over to Afghanistan and to 14 different uh, provincial reconstruction teams. So basically we would train these people and send them out. Uh, but the big, of all this training that we did, it was like a 70, 80 day period of training the last 14 days was what we call the capex that's the the big exercise where everybody's doing all these different missions we have you know plays out there that they're going through scripts so they can see what it's like to actually be on the ground in afghanistan we had hired actors that we ca that came in like i said we had scripts we have uh training ranges where they could set it up like it's going to look in afghanistan so it, this was a big deal and i was actually working because there were some issues during the exercise, something was wrong with the scripts. I don't remember at this point what was wrong with the scripts, but there was something wrong with them. With me being one of the lower ranking captains in the area, and there were several, there were four or five O5s around who were like two levels up that were you know, calling my name to fix different issues with all these different scripts. So 
they gave me some help, but the help was a reserve or reserve officers and they weren't aware of, you know, how the scripts are supposed to go and different things like that. So, of course, you know, it fell on me and I was firing through them. One script. Another was right. Can you fix this? Right. Can you fix this? Can you fix this? And all I remember is being told, Rodney, you got this? 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 And every time, because I was, I was on the ball, Roger, sir, got it. Roger, sir, here you go, sir. Roger, sir, got it. And that went on for about 15 minutes of actual, like, real being called and being on it and, and hustling through it, adrenaline pumping. And then I heard a click. It was an audible click or like a pop somewhere in my head. Just, and I'm like, huh, what was that? That's exactly how it was. Like I was literally passing out, sitting at the computer. Once it happened, I'm like, hmm. And I just, boom, head hit the desk and pop up. That was crazy. Oh, <laughs> okay, let's, let's go a little. <laughs> okay, who, who? Happened again. So after that happened about two or three times, I started to get scared. So I stood up, you know, I walked out. It was snowing outside because it was during the winter time in Indiana. They rubbed the snow on my face. Oh, like, man, took a couple deep, deep breaths outside. Like, I didn't really understand what was happening. So I went back inside. I think I passed out one more time. I got back up. Then I went to get some coffee because my initial reaction is, okay, I must be sleepy. So I got some coffee, went back in there, and I kind of kept standing up. I said, if I fall down, then I'm, I know something's wrong. So I, I kept standing up. And from that point on, you know, the rest of the day went okay. But that was my first actual panic attack.